thanks for watching this free video tutorial which is a free sample from our course comprehensive introduction to Arnold 5 for Maya. It is a massive 9 hour long course in which we explore all the aspects of Arnold for Maya thoroughly. Make sure to visit our website mographplus.com and check the entire course out. Okay folks, in this lesson we'll be taking a look at the color jitter shader. As you can see for this lesson we have a bunch of uh, dynamic cubes and their animation has been baked. And if you go to the outliner, we have this cubes group and all the cubes are under this group. Okay. Now let's change this panel to hypershade. Now let's say we want to assign a different color to all of these cubes. Obviously doing this by hand would be a very time consuming process. And in this case, we can use something like a color jitter. So for starters, let's add a standard surface shader and actually select all the cubes and assign the standard surface shader here. Let me just make a bit more space. And now if you go to the create window and under Arnold uh, utility shader, here we have the AI color jitter. And if we add one, here is the color jitter node basically. Now, the color jitter node basically enables you to alter the input color by applying a random color variation based on object names, polygons, user data, and procedurals. And you can use this gain, hue, and saturation min and max values to define the range of random value to be added. So, let's go to our standard surface shader, increase the base weight to one, and use this color jitter as the base color, and run the Let's just make sure we are on frame 90 here. Right now, the input color that we have defined for the color jitter is this white color. And because we haven't changed the gain, hue, or saturation values, we are obviously not gonna get any randomness. So, first of all, we need to define which set of these options are relevant to us right now. We are basically dealing with individual objects. So the user data, procedural, and face section will be irrelevant and we are gonna be dealing with this gain, hue, and saturation in the object section. You can see we have gain, hue, saturation, and C. Let's say we want to define a base color, like for example, this color here, and now add a bit of randomization on the hue. So what we can do is to define a hue min and hue max. Let's just set the hue max to something like 0.3, or let's see something a little more subtle like 0.1 and as you can see we've just introduced a bit randomness around this color that we have defined here okay obviously we can use a negative value like negative 0.1 for the human and now we have basically gone the other way as well and added some green shade to our randomness if we want to add more randomness let's say negative 0.3 and 0.3 have now introduced this randomness based on the hue. We can do the same thing, for example, for the saturation. So let's say negative 0.5 and 0.5. Now we have some colors that are very saturated and some that are not saturated at all. So you can do that. In this case, let me zero out the saturation and set the hue max to probably something like maybe 0.6 and we can probably use a less saturated color here so now as you can see we have introduced this nice color variation to our cubes and obviously if i change the input color we're going to get a totally different result okay or we can adjust the C to obviously get a different distribution of colors, okay? So that's about this. Now let's take a look at, for example, the face section. And for that, let me just go to my perspective view and actually hide all of these cubes and I have this cube geometry as well let me unhide it as you can see just simple cube with some faces being extruded and uh, so let's 
get back to the hyper shade and assign the same standard surface shader to these cubes and run the IPR. Now, as you can see from the IPR, even though we have this color jitter and we have defined this hue, mean and max values, but because we have defined it in the object section, it doesn't affect our cube because it's just one single object and we want to add a bit of randomization to its faces. So we need to actually come down to the face section and start adjusting the values down here. Let's start, for example, add a hue max of one. And as you can see now, we get all of these different colors for different faces. We can obviously adjust the saturation min and max if we wanted to, or add some negative hue min and 0.5 for hue max. And as you can see, we have basically randomized the colors of the faces of these cubes. And we have the same set of options for the procedurals and user data. We take a look at these sections when we learn about the procedurals and user data later on in the course. So that's about the color jitter node in Arnold for my, as you can see, it's a very, very useful and simple to use node. Okay, folks, see you in the next lesson. Thanks for watching this free video tutorial, which is a free sample from our course Comprehensive Introduction to Arnold 5 for Maya. It is a massive 9 hour long course in which we explore all the aspects of Arnold for Maya thoroughly. Make sure to visit our website mographplus.com and check the entire course out.